Hello everybody, it's Carl here from Comic Culture and the Game Store in Lincoln, England and today I'm going to talk to you about Kevin Zucker's Napoleon's Quagmire from Operational Studies Group. Not enough games have got the word Quagmire in the title, I think it's a, an excellent title. It's set in the Peninsula War, uh, Napoleonic as you may have guessed. It's about the British and the Spanish fighting the French. And in fact, this one is part two of the Peninsula War, and it's the campaign in Extremadura from March, November 1809. This is part of the Library of Napoleonic Battle series. Uh, there's quite a few of them now. In fact, this is volume seven. Although this says it's part two of the Peninsula War, part one hasn't actually been released yet. So uh, don't think, don't look around thinking, oh, wow, I haven't even got the first one, so I don't need to get this one. The system's really nice. Uh, it's medium complexity. Uh, it's easy to get into, it's not tactical, it's not strategic, it's what you might call operational. So you can have battles, you will end up with fairly historical battles a lot of the time, but you've got a lot more flexibility as to where you place your units. And I think, to me, it gives you a better feel for Napoleonic warfare, because you've not just got guys lined up at Waterloo or wherever, and they're facing each other toe-to-toe, -to -toe and you've got little chance of manoeuvre. With this, you've got a lot more ability to, you know, outscout your opponent, outmarch him uh, and and do what Napoleon would do, which is to you know get his guys where he wanted them uh, and where his opponent didn't want them. Okay, gorgeous box, absolutely gorgeous. Lovely bit of art on that. On the back, uh, you've got a description of the different games. You've got Medellin, you've got Talavera, you've got Alamonisad and Osana. There are two full color maps, two half size maps. Uh, really nicely done again. The art's by Charlie Kibler. Uh, who did the maps and counters and yeah i don't i have no you know nothing bad to say about charlie kibler uh, i think he's one of the best guys working in the business so we start with the uh study folder this is effectively the, ser the this is the series rules here and here's the study folder so the series rules is obviously for the entire series the library of napoleon at battles it's got rules for zones of control sounds a bit old-fashioned but i think it works in this system leaders movement you've got hidden forces You've got obviously combat, you've got artillery that can bombard, you've got vedettes, which are basically scouts. So there are the rules for allow you to play with hidden forces. You can use scouts to help work out what your opponent's got, baggage, train, supply, demoralization, recovery. Uh, when units leave the field, they can come back. 24 pages, not in color, uh, but uh, you know, clear, well-written. I don't have any problems with them at all. Then you've got the study folder, which is scenario information, a historical and design note. So this is the one that obviously applies specifically to uh, Napoleon's Quagmire. Okay, description of all the one. Lots and lots and lots of bits of card. I'm gonna try and race through these as fast as possible. Casualty record track for the coalition. That's an advert for another one of their games, so don't need to bother looking at that one just yet. Order slips, if you wanna give your units orders. Victory worksheet, so you can work out who's win, who's won. Uh, scenario parameters, so for instance, for each scenario it tells you what time it starts, what, who controls which bridges, where there are bridges on the board, what reinforcements might come on. Uh, you've got the combat results table. Okay, it's odd based combat, it seems a bit old fashioned in these days. Uh, but I think because there's enough going on in the game, you don't need a particularly complex and difficult combat system. Terrain effects, notes on the combat table, terrain effects on movement and line of sight, another combat table there. You'll find there's a few combat tables dotted around. Uh, information about the other games. So you can see uh, that's the intention. The entire series is going to be pretty large. Rules here for adding the cards. Now there are cards that you'll see in a minute. Uh, there's two decks of cards, one for each side. You can play without them, and a lot of people do, but you can also put them in and they add more variability replayability I think sometimes I think they can be a bit mental uh, but uh, I think you find that it, it, if you don't mind not being able to perfect plan then having the cards thrown in is going to uh, certainly scratch that itch organization charts for the Anglo Allied so second British division which brigades it's got in which battalions were in those brigades etc casual review record track for the French okay track for each scenario Organisation chart for the French, uh, you know, Laval, all the different units, which division he was, what it comes with, what are infantry, what are cavalry, what are artillery, etc. 
full strength holding box. So you've got holding boxes, you've got where you put your permanently eliminated units, eliminated units are removed from the map, reduced units, recovered units, things move around there. Weather tables, obviously, you know, you can be fair, it can be hot, dust storm, rain, thunderstorm even, uh, and you roll for the, for the weather. Got some clarifications and some corrections. It's a bit annoying that it's a brand new game and it's already come with some corrections, but you know, these things are always uh, moving targets. You've got one of these sheets for each scenario, so that's Med A in. The turn record track shows you who comes on when. Same for Talavera, same for Aranchoas, which is, I think is a mini scenario on the Asana map. Almonacid and Osana or Okana. The Spanish organization chart. So you can see what's there, uh, you know, what hex they come on at. Here's your decks of cards, two decks of cards. Uh, for instance, this one, both that one's the French deck, obviously in blue, and then you've got the Spanish and uh, Anglo allied one. You play the road column on one of your opponent's organizations and uh, they effectively go into road march. So you effectively, you're screwing them over a little bit. It adds a little bit, let's say, or semi randomness to it. Here's the map for Televera. Now these maps, they're fairly subtle, I would say. Uh, some maps are far too colorful and bright. These are not going to tie you out. They're very clear, very nicely done. Again, Charles Kibler, he's one of my favorite uh, artists. You've got Medi in, so another one of the small maps. Uh, you can see there's Medi in itself, there's the river, okay. Don Benito, you've got lots of orchards here. Then you've got the slightly bigger maps, well, twice as big in fact. So you've got Okana or Asana. Sorry, I don't know the pronunciation. Uh, this one. Okay, one side, the other side. There's Okana itself. Uh, and here you've got Almonis Acid. Now, when you look at the battle, the battle might only occupy a few of the hexes on the map. But because it's a, an operational game, you'll start with your forces spread out and the battle, or the, I can't, I'm not quite sure where the battle was on this, but let's say the battle was here. Because it's operational and you're starting from a different place, you may end up with a battle in a completely different place on the map. It gives you the ability to divert, to change history in a lot, more, uh, a lot bigger sense than you would normally get. Okay, last but not least, the counters. Uh, not that many counters, you know, it's, there's basically one sheet of units. You've got the French in blue, you've got the Spanish in white, and the Anglo-Allied in red. Colour-coded for organisation, got all the stats on there that you need. When they're reduced, they can be flipped over. Here you've got some sort of hidden movement, so you've got leaders, you can flip them over so your opponent can't see what it is. It's not, you don't have to play with those rules, but obviously if you want to, it's quite interesting. You also get vedettes of cavalry, so scouts, and you can send them to look at what your opponent's got. So you put those on top of your stack, so your opponent can't see what's in the stack. Here's your counters. Uh, Roadblocks, road march, out of supply, in command. Every organization's got a chit so you can see how well it's doing. So you can put it on the, on the uh, tracks uh, so you can see whether it's uh, you know, in trouble or not, about to break. Uh, on the back, more information, slightly different ones, reorganization, reinforcement delays, things like that. Really nice package, lots of stuff, lots and lots of stuff. All of these games have got a lot of stuff in them. Uh, I think they're really nice. I think it's a very good system. I think it, it's a very playable system. You know, if you're looking for absolute complex Napoleonic tactical gaming, well, this isn't it. If you're looking for a way of being able to do an entire short campaign, that's going to work a lot better for you. And they are beautifully produced. I uh, hope you've enjoyed seeing what's in the box for Napoleon's Quagmire from OSG. Uh, this is Carl from Comic Culture and the Game Store in Lincoln. Don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy what, you, uh, what I've put out and uh, give us a thumbs up. And uh, I'm always happy to read any comments that you've got. Thanks very much. Goodbye.